So in this video we're going to look at quadratics and the nature of roots. So a little recap on quadratics. A quadratic would look typically like f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Um, so you would basically have a u or an n. If your number before the x squared is positive, you'll end up with a u. If the number before the x squared is negative, you'll end up with an n shape, okay? So for example then, let's say we had these two functions here. That would be a typical u shape, 3x squared plus 5x plus 2. And that would be a typical n shape, minus x squared minus 3x plus 2. So in these two typical functions here of quadratics, what we can see is we quite clearly have two roots here and we have two roots here. So in other words, where this function is equal to zero on the y-axis, in other words, where this graph cuts the x-axis is where it is getting a result of zero on the y. That is where you find your roots or your solutions to the quadratic. What values of x would give this whole function equal to zero? So how would you work out what the roots are? Well, you always have two options with quadratics. You can either use the minus b formula or you can factorize. So in this case, what I have done is I am looking to find the roots and I am using the minus b formula. So here's what I have. Um, I use the minus b formula here, sub in all my values, and I get a third and minus two are these two roots, and minus 3.6 and 0 0.6 are these two roots. Now, your quadratic mightn't always look like that, though. What you could have is something that looks like this, where you have the quadratic touching the x-axis or cutting the x-axis at only one place. In other words, there's only one root. There's only one place where that quadratic will equal zero. Same with over here, there's only one root. So a typical example of those functions might be f of x is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 4 for that one, and minus x squared minus 6x minus 9 for this one. And again, if we wanted to find where the root uh, was, we would solve each of these functions by putting them equal to zero. And again, you've got two options. You can use the minus b formula or you can factorize to solve it. In this case, I'm factorizing to solve it. So when I factorize and solve it, I end up with x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 2. So what I end up is with a repeated factor and of course, therefore, only one solution. The same solution comes up twice. Okay, same with over here. So sometimes people say with this, you've got equal roots or one root, okay? They're equal solutions or equal roots. In other words, graphically, uh, it looks like one root. So the other thing that we could have is we could have quadratics that look like this. And straight away, you've probably spotted that here, we don't have the quadratic curve touching the x-axis or cutting the x-axis at all. So that would imply that there are no roots. So what happens here when we go to try and find the roots is when we go to try and solve x squared plus 3x plus 3 equals 0, we find that we can't factorize it. So our only option then is to use the minus b formula. And when we try to evaluate the minus b formula, what we end up with is an error on our calculator. And of course, if we look in more detail, the reason that we're ending up with an error on our calculator is because of this here. We have ended up with a negative in the root, okay? Now, we know that the only way that we can deal with the square root of a negative is if we consider complex numbers or imaginary numbers, okay? But when we're not in complex numbers, we're not dealing with unreal values here. Uh, we cannot get a solution for this. We cannot get a real value for the square root of a negative. And that is why it's coming up as an error on our calculator. So this is the situation where we will end up with no roots. Okay? So to recap, in solving our quadratics, in other words, finding roots 
of the quadratic, here's the three options that we came across. Using our formula minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, our minus b formula. Uh, the first option we did, we filled in fine, we were able to get two different roots. We got a square root of 1. But the second option, when we end up getting the repeated factor, we factorized it, but this is it if you use the minus b formula. What we end up in the minus b formula is here the square root of 0, and we end up then therefore uh, with just the same root or one root because the plus or minus 0 means you're not going to get two different roots. So we get x equals 2 and x equals 2, and then the last option when we use the minus b formula to try and solve the final quadratic we ended up with a negative in the root here. So basically, um, the minus b formula tells us a lot about what's going on with the graph. And actually, in particular, the key element here is what is going on in the root. If you have the root of a whole number, you're going to get a nice, clear solution, two clear solutions. If you end up with zero in the root, you're always only going to end up with one solution, in other words, one root. And if you end up with a negative in the square root, that's where you're going to end up with an error and therefore no roots. So this bit here, the b squared minus 4ac, that's what's key in determining the nature of the roots of a quadratic. So in summary, these are the four key pieces of information that you need to know in terms of determining the nature of roots. The key piece of information in your minus b formula that will tell you everything is the b squared minus 4ac part. And the reason it's this part that will tell you everything is this is the part in the minus b formula that is under the square root. So, if the b squared minus 4ac, in other words, under the square root in the minus b formula, is greater than 0, you're going to get two real and distinct, which means different roots. If it's exactly 0, you're going to get equal roots, in other words, one root. There are two ways that that can be described. And if it's less than 0, so in other words, under the square root is negative, that's where we're not going to be able to solve it. So either you consider it to have no roots or what might be said unreal roots. In other words, unless you're going to go down the road of complex numbers and considering imaginary numbers, in other words, dealing with an, the square root of a negative, that's the only way you're going to be able to get any further with that. So to recap, bringing these two together, if they are um, real and you don't know whether they're different or equal, but you just know that you're going to get two real numbers, then it's square root, uh, sorry, greater than or equal to zero. So the b squared minus 4ac is either greater than or equal to zero. You're going to get some values here. And so that will tell you you have real roots. So your four elements there are what's key. And just dealing with that little part of the minus b formula will tell you everything you need to know about the nature of the roots. Okay, so let's try this question. For what values of k does this x squared minus 10x plus k equal 0 have equal roots? Okay, pause the video and see how you get on with this. So if we're talking about equal roots, then I know b squared minus 4ac must equal 0. So um, looking at the quadratic, a is 1, b is minus 10, and c is k. And therefore, b squared is minus 10 squared, minus 4 times a is 4 times 1, and then times c, which is k, must equal 0. So let's solve this. Minus 100 all to be squared, sorry, minus 10 all to be squared is 100, minus 4k equals 0, and we'll add 4k to both sides. 100 is equal to 4k, divide both sides by 4, therefore k is equal to 25. That's the value of k for which this would have equal roots. Okay, try this question. Given that any real number all to be squared is greater than or equal to zero, prove that x squared minus 3kx minus k squared equals zero has real roots. Okay, pause the video, see how you get on with this one. So if it has real roots, I know that b squared minus 4ac is greater than or equal to zero. So, Looking at the quadratic I have here, 
the a is 1, the b is minus 3k, and the c is minus k squared. So let's fill this in as best we can. Then we have b squared is minus 3k squared minus 4ac, and for c we're putting in minus k squared. And I need to show that that is in fact greater than or equal to 0. So they give me a little hint here. If I can just show that I have something in the brackets that's a square, then I know for certain that anything squared is greater than or equal to zero. So the key thing with this is, can I rewrite this as all one square? So let's see what I have. Minus 3k all to be squared anyway is 9k squared. And minus 4 times 1 minus k squared is plus 4 k squared. And so 9k squared plus 4k squared is 13k squared. Can I be certain that no matter what value for k, whether it's positive or negative, that this expression would always be positive? And I can because no matter what the value for k is, because it's being squared, that bit there for sure is going to be a positive value. And if I multiply a positive value by 13, I'm also for sure going to get a positive value. So I've got to here and I've proven that it has real ones, roots. I'm just going to give a statement of conclusion. Okay, similar question, show px squared plus p plus q x plus q equals zero has real roots. Okay, pause the video and see how you get on with this. Okay, so it has real roots, so what do we know? b squared minus 4ac is greater than or equal to zero. So let's find our a, b and c. a is the coefficient of x squared, which is p in this case. Um, b is the coefficient of x, which is p plus q in this case, and c is q. So now filling this in, b squared is going to be p plus q all to be squared, minus 4 times a, which is p, times c, which is q, is greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so we're going to use the same approach as the last question. I want to show that for sure this is can be written as something maybe squared. That's the one sure way I can be definite that no matter what the values of P and Q, I, the minute I square it, I'm gonna get something that's positive. So that's always your kind of basis approach with something like this. So let's multiply this out first to see what I have. P plus Q all to be squared. If you remember your quick expansion of squares like this, square the first, square the second, and double the product of the two. Uh, minus 4pq is greater than or equal to 0. Um, let's tidy this up, and the only way I can tidy this up is by adding together the things that are the same. The only two um, terms that are the same here are the pq terms. So I have p squared, 2pq minus 4pq is minus 2pq, and then I have a plus q squared as well. All right, now, well, I know for certain that's positive, because it's a p squared, and I know for certain q squared is positive, but the minus 2pq, I can't be sure, uh, obviously, if that expression there would be uh, positive or negative, and when I subtract them as well, what would I end up with? However, I don't know if you've spotted here, and you always want to be looking out for this, square the first, square the second, double the product of the two, that expression there is p minus q all to be squared expanded. So that can be tidied up and written as a square. And so therefore, now I know that this expression, these three expressions here can be written as p minus q all to be squared. I now know for certain that no matter what the value of p or q, because I'm squaring the whole thing, it has to be positive. Okay, so I'm going to write that statement of conclusion and that's very important. With any questions they're asking you to show or prove, you want a little statement of conclusion at the end.
and this kind of idea of spotting something as a square or it is of course the process of completing the square there's another video that is on completing the square so that will help you spot these kind of things uh, a lot easier Okay, last question. Determine the nature of roots in each of the following. So we have 3x squared plus 5x minus 1 equals 0, 49x squared plus 42x plus 9 equals 0, and 2x squared plus 8x plus 9 equals 0. Pause the video, see how you get on with this. Okay, so what we need to figure out is what is going on with, of course, b squared minus 4ac. And we'll determine then whether we're talking about something greater than 0, equal to 0, or less than 0. And then we'll be able to determine what kind of roots we're dealing with. So in the first quadratic, a is 3, b is 5, and c is minus 1. So b squared is 5 squared minus 4ac is 4 times 3 by minus 1, and that works out to be uh, 37. 37 is quite clearly greater than 0, and therefore this quadratic here must have uh, real roots. Okay, let's try the next one. So we have A is 49, b is 42 and c is 9 so a b squared is 42 squared minus 4 times a times c and that works out to be 0. So therefore since it's equal to 0 we know it has equal roots. And then the last one, we have a equals 2, b equals 8, and c equals 9. Um, and so b squared is going to be 8 squared minus 4 times a times c. And this works out to be minus 8. And minus 8 is less than 0. Therefore, we know they are unreal roots. They're not real numbers, in other words or no roots. Okay, so make sure you have this written up clearly. It's a very important element and then filling it all in, of course, and that will determine what type of roots you have.